Hi, ladies and gents. Let's watch the Bionicle movie. You know, that really good movie from 2003, the same year as the third Lord of the Rings. I'm sure it's just as quality as that. Especially the, the effects, the CG effects. I'm sure they hold up real well. See, this is hitting me right in the nostalgia because I know you're saying, Oh no, you're ruining my childhood by looking at the Bionicle movie. But no, remember, I this this movie was my childhood as well. But um, I remember seeing clips of it on YouTube and thinking, oh god, this doesn't hold up real well. But I'm going to tell you a story later, which is highly embarrassing, but <laughs> it'll explain everything. So, I I was a fucking fanboy of this movie, so I haven't seen it in like 10 years or so. Well, well it came out in 2003, so that's, I don't know, it's possible. I haven't seen it in a long, long time, but I still remember like every scene, so. <laughs> This is why this movie sucks. More rocks in his head than a- than a- I forgot what he said. I even remember all the musical flares. And every shot. This is weird. This is freaking me out. This movie has that problem of they just like- they have all this lore. I think that's what you call it. They have these names for all these random ass things. So they- instead of saying like... Oh, I can't think of an example. That's bullcrap. Obviously they're not gonna say that in a Bionicle Kids movie, but like... Instead, they say, that's tohu, no, that's bull tohu, you know what I mean? Just changing words for random, just random ass bionicle words instead. Wait, well, why does his mask, like, wiggle? That that always bothered me. Like, with the air, I thought they were made out of plastic. Look, his, his, his like, cheeks are wiggling like a, like he's made out of skin. It's kind of bizarre. I never, I, I always noticed that as a kid as well, and it always bothered me. There are a couple of things that always bother me about this movie. One of them being, I know this is a really, really English thing to say, but the voice acting is so fucking American. Like, really American. Like, that guy is that, that one with the golden mask. Takua! Takua! Hey, man! Dude, what are you doing, bro? He's, he's got a voice like that, and it's really, really grating after a while. It's just, it's just fucking terrible. Yeah, I, obviously that you're not really that's not going to be really something that you know bothers you if you're an American person because it probably is just normal to you but that always bothered me for some reason and the second thing is that some of the stylistic choices I found kind of weird like how the only things that are Bionicles are the Bionicles themselves it's like what they do in the Lego games like nothing in the environment is Lego look it's just like a castle with a bridge why can't you just make it made out of Bionicle? Like a Lego movie, everything in that's Lego. And like, they don't really look like Bionicles that much, they change them quite a lot. So, you know, this, I don't really give that much of a fuck, I really don't care, but it, you'd, you'd think they'd want to make them look as much as Bionicles as possible, so you can notice it even more in the toys. I suppose they do look pretty similar. They had to style it so they're easier to animate and whatnot. Cheaper. And, yeah, it's kind of weird the way they sort of sexualize the female one just because she's a female. The actual toy looks very similar to the other ones because they, they just reuse the pieces. So it looks like nearly identical because it's in a movie and they need to establish that it's a woman. They make her have, like, a really th tiny waist. The big hips and bionic boobies. Bionic, bionic boobies. There we go, that was an example. The Toa squabble like Goko birds over a berry. What's a Goko bird? Are we supposed to know what that means? I, n I never really liked this whole scene. I found it really, really weird. I know the toys had those weird like balls that they fling, but it never, it never really felt as... <sighs> it, it just feels really Americanized. I know, I know that's not really anything, not really a problem, but... It just feels kind of weird, because the only reason this scene is in the movie is to establish that these guys can play this weird game and fling the balls or whatever it is around. So at the end, they can use it again to defeat the baddie. I think that's what happens. But, um... Yeah, I never really liked this scene, because I, I... Another thing that always bothered me was that I always wanted this movie to be about, about the actual, you know, regular Bionicles. You know, the the big tall ones, like the one that was surfing on the lava earlier. I wanted it to be about them, because they're the ones you care about, but they make them all like these babyish little mini Bionicle people instead. Which I suppose is quite a a movie thing to do. But I suppose whatever. The dialogue is very cheesy. I'll keep that in mind. No you won't, because you're a piece of plastic. 
fucking asshole. Here we go. This is the this is the shot which they call back to right at the end. To it's called foreshadowing. Kids, learn it because nearly every movie does it. Except he misses there, and it's like a, that's, then he doesn't miss at the end because that's an arc. In it's kind of a really simple arc. He misses the shot at the beginning, and then he does it again, and then he hits it at the end. Shows that his character has progressed in some way. I think the thing that's so off-putting about the American voices is the naming conventions, because the naming conventions are all like Maori, the native New Zealand people. I was born there, fun fact. But um, it just sounds weird with Americans saying it for some reason to me. I don't know what I'd prefer, but... It's just kind of a, cl a stylistic clash to me in a lot of ways. It makes it feel like a animated kids movie instead of just being the Bionicle movie sort of thing. Because I think with the Lego movie, the, you know, the American voices work fine. Obviously, the voice acting was better in that because they had real actors and stuff, and probably a bigger budget, a far bigger budget than like the fifty dollars they had to make this movie. But see, that character's like Indian or something. That that blue face one there. Which kind of fits in to the thing. It makes it seem more natural than having an American voice. I'm really getting on this American voice thing. So that guy sounds fine as well. It's just some of the characters are so disgustingly American. That it's, just, it's just really jarring. Oh, it's actually kind of funny the way the Lego movie pokes fun at this trope. The, like, chosen one and stuff. I never even thought about that before. And it's by the same company. Lego. He walks like he shit his pants. Look at him. He's got, like, a six-pack. He's <laughs> really wiggling about. That's weird. See, the thing I can appreciate about this movie is that it it kind of knows what it is. It knows that it's just a stupid sort of kids movie and it doesn't, it doesn't fuck about. It's got really fast pacing, which is good for a kids movie like this because unlike Food Fight and weird things like that where scenes just go on and on and they're really weird and things just happen, at least this movie, it makes sense at least. What's happening is it's easy to follow. It's not like, it's not a total fuck you to the audience. So here's our villain. I remember... I remember finding that odd as well, these little worms. W worms in Bionicle? Why isn't everything like a robot? But they're a part robot, part worm? I guess, if you say so, movie. Why do so many kids' movies insist on having some kind of kiddie protagonist? I suppose I suppose their, their, their idea is that their thought process is... If they're if the main character is a kid, then the kid's going to relate to them more. But I don't think that's always the case, unless you're like a really good bunch of filmmakers, like the guys at Pixar, and you have like Up with the kid. But the kid's not even the main character in Up; it's the old guy. But that doesn't matter because it's a fucking good movie, and kids don't care. You don't have to have a kid as a protagonist. In fact, it's probably better when they're not. Like if it was just the six main Bionicle adults, I I don't know if that's the right word. But the, like that one there, the blue one. If it was just six of them. Then they just they'd want to be them instead of the kid ones. Like it doesn't really make that much of a difference. I don't really like the design of those those evil characters. But Bionicle always used to do that with the villains. Like they were just six of them, and they were all the same color as e each one of them was the same color as one of the good guy ones. And there wasn't really that much difference apart from like the spines or the the weapon. It's a little bit boring. Like they all look pretty much the same. Little nitpick right there. Where's the ice one? The ice one's the best one. Get out of here, blue one. You're boring and a dumb girl. Filled with bionicle cooties. Get out of here. Here's the thing. A lot of people for kids' movies just say, Oh, it's just a kids' movie. It's harmless. It doesn't matter. And uh, that argument has some weight, I guess. But I think for the most part, People take for granted how not stupid kids are in a lot of ways. You don't... They're not... Okay, they are, they are pretty stupid. But, I mean... They're not that stupid. I mean, you don't... They don't... It's not an excuse to make your movie shoddy and boring. I'm not saying this is particularly that. I'm, it's not like fucking high art of any kind. It's not even that special. The only reason it's kind of entertaining me is because the pacing is so quick and because there's the... The slight bit of nostalgia there, but even then, that's not really affecting how I'm feeling about the movie. I, it, it's not quite as much as a slog or um, as cringy as I thought it was going to be. They're actually taking it kind of seriously, which I do appreciate. 
which um, I guess is is good for the kids as well, because it actually makes it feel like it's not a complete slog and waste of time. And the animation isn't even that bad for 2003. I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly look up and see what other animated movies came out in 2003 for some kind of comparison there. Oh, okay, Finding Nemo, Atlantis, Milo's Return, Looney Tunes, Back in Action, Bionicle the movie. Stitch the movie. So it's a very weak year for animated movies apart from Finding Nemo. So obviously compared to Pixar movies it looks like fucking garbage, especially Finding Nemo, which looks so good even now. But obviously, you know, they have hundreds of millions of dollars and this clearly doesn't. I wonder if I can find the budget for this somewhere. So IMDB reckons that the budget was five million two hundred thousand estimated. Which I guess is is pretty is pretty cheap for an animated movie. That even the bad ones can rack up hundreds of millions of dollars worth of debt in terms of how they're not cheap to make animated movies. Which probably explains why the backgrounds are so sort of boring. Like it's just a tree, a bit of grass. And compared to Finding Nemo, where everything is just ridiculously detailed. I'm not going to keep comparing this film to that because it's not fair. But, um, I've probably seen this movie more times than Finding Nemo. So pretty much this movie, the idea of it is that they've sh they've shown the first three of the six Toa or whatever, and clearly it's kind of inspired by Lord of the Rings in in, in some ways because uh, it's about the journey. They've got the thing that they need to take somewhere. They've got the they've got the six um, bad guys who are like tracking them, trying to find them, just like the. Uh, I forgot what they're fucking called, the hooded guys in Lord of the Rings. I can't believe I forgot what they're called, but I can't focus with the movie and stuff going on at the same time. I think it's pretty clear that this is sort of like a kid's version of that. I'm even getting weird vibes of the Dark Crystal from this as well, with the whole sort of light and dark thing. Obviously, I, I highly doubt this movie was inspired by that at all, but... Hey, it's that thing that they sold as a toy because it was in the movie. Even though the toy looked nothing like that because it was actually made out of Bionicle pieces. And it wasn't like a real bird. So apparently the like early ideas for this movie were um, to have a kid somehow get into the Bionicle universe and be the seventh tower. Hey, it's the best Bionicle. Hello there, Ice Man. He was always my favorite one. But anyway, yeah, that's just having this kid be in the Bionicle thing be in the movie, have a real life live action kid in the movie, that's like, that's what you'd imagine a cheap like, oh yeah, let's just make a kid be in it. That's an easy way to make it cool, isn't it? That's, I'm glad they didn't do that, because that would have been um, predictable, lazy, and uh, just obvious, way too obvious, so I'm glad they didn't do that at least. So apparently the, the reason they changed the design of them to not look less like the actual toys is because it was hard to convey emotion, and, um, which I which I guess makes sense. They're, they're very... The toys are very sort of uh, blocky looking with lots of holes and weird shapes to them, so I can understand that. But at the same time, they could have made it work if they really wanted to, I think. But uh, why does every one of the main characters always just get his ass kicked? I suppose he's actually doing something now. Another fun fact. Those villains there that, like, have the weird mouthpiece, those things. They were apparently inspired by... Uh, a alien. From Alien. And aliens. Which is kind of a weird thought. The double mouth thing and... The weird hunch. The big thing that's like a big cock. Their head's like a big cock. Right, so I mentioned earlier that I've got a story to tell you <laughs> that's really embarrassing about this movie that relates to this movie. And I'm going to tell you it right now, because I don't really care about the scene particularly. So, when I was younger, I was fucking obsessed with this movie to the point where... Oh god, I had it on video. Video, video, VHS. Um, for you kids out there who don't know what that is, it's, it, was, it was what existed before DVDs. You put it into a VHS player, and you'd have to rewind it. You couldn't skip right to the beginning. So when you finished watching it, you had to actually rewind it. It was tape. But anyway, I would... I sat there for, like, hours on end. For some reason, I had stacks of sugar paper with pens and, and paper. And I... 
I wrote the script of this movie onto sugar paper. Big A3 sugar paper sizes. I'd, I'd, I'd write the name of whoever was speaking, and then I would painfully rewind, pause, rewind, pause, just to hear the dialogue, and I'd, and I'd write the script. I wrote the script onto, the, onto this pages and pages and pages of sugar paper. I don't know why I did this. I'm trying to remember what my thought process was, but I really don't know why I decided to do it. I suppose the internet wasn't quite as prevalent back then, so I couldn't have just googled Bionicle Mask of Light script. So instead, I decided to sit there and spend hours and hours pausing, rewinding, and then writing just... Just so, so many lines of dialogue. I, and I don't know why I did it. And it's always haunted me to this day. Maybe there's some kind of secret. I don't, you're imagining, like... Like in a movie, when when a when a character goes a bit crazy and they they write it like like in fucking Transformers Two, where Sam Witwicky is all going crazy and writing all the symbols everywhere. Like, but instead you're writing the script to Bionicle, the Mask of Light. I don't I don't know why I did it. I have no idea, but I did, and I kind of wish I kept all the all the the sheets of paper that I did of it because uh, very odd, very very odd. A bit worrying, actually, so... So that's that. The movie does get quite repetitive, though. It's just, go to a new place that reminds you of toy. Baddies show up. There's a fight scene. And then they go to the next place, then repeat. Which I suppose is fine if you're a kid and you don't really care about anything, but I said earlier, it's not an excuse for shoddy, lazy writing, but... Whatever. They always have to say something. They can't just attack. They have to say, Welcome to Onu Koro. Goo. Oh, well. Bionicle movie one. What are you going to do? See, they always get their ass kicked. They don't do anything. That always bothered me as well. They, they never do anything and they just get, get beaten. I don't think they do anything in the movie apart from that. See, again, he, he just came, He literally just came into the scene and he was defeated in one. He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He's <laughs> Wind fly. What is up with this hippie? Get out of here, hippie. I guess the movie was running too short when they finished it, so they had to add these he's going evil scenes in to have some kind of conflict. <laughs> God, that looks stupid. Reminds me of when Thor um, flings his hammer around and just flies. Pretty goofy. So I have this thing for watching really fucking awful animated movies. So this really isn't that bad. You know, there's this food fight, there's things like, what's it called, Escape from Planet Earth, just these obnoxious, just awful animated movies that I've seen. So this, this has a certain charm to it, I think. It's not, it's not offensive. <laughs> it's not, things, things are happening, it's not annoying or irritating or obnoxious. It's just sort of, it just is what it is. It sort of embraces that, and it, the movie just goes and then ends. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I thought I was sure this was going to be super, super cringy and just terrible and lazy, but it's it's not lazy. It's just sort of serviceable. It's kind of a serviceable animated movie. It's it's not very memorable. It's not very special, particularly. It's only special if it's nostalgic for you in some way or another. Like, if you showed this to a kid now, I doubt they'd really care that much, unless you, like, really told them how good it was, and then they'd probably believe you. You know, but... It's... <laughs> in fact, kids will probably find it boring now, because it's not... It's not really that flashy. It's not filled with loads of crazy colours and all the... ADD craziness that a lot of animated movies are now. Another positive, it's only like an hour and ten minutes long. Woohoo! I really hate this character. He's he's probably the worst part about it, just just because of his voice. There's just something really off-putting about it, really unconvincing. It's like so on the nose. It's like, I know I'm in a kid's movie. Let's just ham it up. Oh no! Takua! Save me, bro! I don't think he ever says bro, but it just sounds right in that voice. See, even these two have a little mini arc. They start off hating each other, and then they they learn to not be assholes. That's nice. Thank you for that movie. Back off. 
I s it sounded like she just said fuck off. I'm pretty. You even got a nice little message there. Don't worry about being different because you'll be the chosen one and your best friend will die instead of you. I still don't know what a Matoran or a Taraga is. Is that my fault? Or is it because it's kind of stupid and I don't care? Yeah, they don't like really fight or anything. He just says, simple game of Coley. Let's do that. Let's play. So, yeah, yeah. It's kind of anticlimactic than playing this. Of all things, they kind of set up at the beginning. But why would the biggest bad guy in the known world, in the Bionicle world, do that? Why wouldn't he just crush him if he was really that scared? It's quite a, like, devil sort of thing to do. You know, like, the devil will always make deals with people and stuff. Just to make it somewhat fair, I guess. But I guess it's supposed to be some kind of symmetry or payoff. The setup at the beginning, and, and the goodies triumph once again. Hooray! 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 See, it doesn't even end on like a like an awful musical montage, like like fucking Shrek or something like that. It's very tasteful in that respect. That that really wasn't as bad as I was maybe remembering, kind of wanting it to be almost, because it it really wasn't that bad at all. I don't know if I'm warped by my obvious nostalgia for it but then just looking at it as a movie it's not it's not particularly special in any way but at the same time it's not it's not bad at all for a uh, animated movie it doesn't it doesn't do a lot of the clichés that animated movies tend to do like even the, the the goofy like crab thing that's like the the little comic relief character it's not even that annoying it's just sort of there and it's cute or whatever a very um a very competent movie. It, it, it's, it's a movie, at least. It has clear acts. It has actual characters. Things happen. Uh, it's a lot of, a lot of um, weird made-up words and things they don't really explain. There's like a prophecy that they never really explain particularly. Unless I missed it somehow. But um, yeah, not bad at all. It really was not painful. I actually kind of enjoyed that for the hour or so it was on. It does help that it is so short, so it's just sort of like a... Huh. It's not something I'm going to like sit down and go back to like every year or anything. It's it's not really that great. It's, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it up there in any sort of uh, best animated movie ever things. But as far as as far as just a, a competent, fine animated movie, this is one of them. So I expect um, you Bionicle movie fans who still have love for it from when you were a kid are going to be pleased that uh, <laughs> it wasn't awful enough for me to tear it apart, really. Which I really wasn't expecting, because I, I remembered a lot of it, but I didn't remember that much. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!